that would be new to me at least. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. We we can watch that. Sure. Just give me a second. Okay. So this is uh, this Hello, is okay. Everyone. There he is. There's that, that guy. or Sorfang, as it's supposed to be pronounced, is a the legend amongst the hordes, and a lot hold him in high regard. But why yes. exactly is that? What has the journey been for this, this orc, the and where might it take him? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Like most orcs, Sao Feng's story begins on a little planet called Trenor, where he grew up within the Blackrock clan, found a mate whose name has not been revealed, and had a child oh. called Trenor. You might have heard the tale of his brother Broxigar, who sacrificed himself and stood against none other than Sir Garrus himself. See, that's something that a lot of people don't know, is that actually Broxigar got sent back in time, but he's actually Sao Feng's brother. Like, it, they're, they're brothers. So that's like one thing a lot of people I, I don't think realize. Self. This is a family of badasses, but the orcs were molded and forged amidst the fires of a Oh, you guys don't want to watch it? Okay, that's fine. Um, so anyway, I don't know. I thought the new cinematic was really, really good. Uh, I thought it was amazing. I liked it a lot. And, um, yeah, uh, I, I thought it was great. I enjoyed it a lot more, probably, because it had, like, extra character development and... A lot of the other cinematics don't really have that in the same way, so I, I was really happy about that. And I was also happy that they added in a new character, right, with the uh, the um, the Zappy Boy, right? Uh, chat pause mode. Well, no, I mean, because if people, if everybody's like spamming Resident Sleeper, I, I don't want to watch something if everybody's just spamming that. You know what I mean? Like, why would I want to watch that? It just seems like it seems unpleasant for everyone, right? And it's one man spam. It's the same guy. Okay, so do we want to watch it or not? Tell me right now if we want to watch it or not. Right now, I'm going to let y'all vote. I'm going to let y'all vote right now. It's like five people spamming. All right, we'll just time them the fuck out. We're going to watch the video. All right, because I actually... I'm going to be honest. I want to watch the fucking video. I want to know what happened. And you guys are making me feel like shit. So we're going to watch the video and you're going to like it. All right? That's what it's going to be. We're going to turn them back on. I'm going to watch the video, and you're going to love it, okay? You're going to sit here, you're going to be like, wow. You're going to be like, Pog, this is a great video. Wow, I love this video. Jeez, thank you so much, Asmongold, for showing us this video. We're going to learn so much. We love this video, okay? Tell me right now you love it before we watch it. I want to make sure you guys love it. Okay, good. All right, you like it. Great. Okay, good. Uh, I I'm, I'm glad that everybody agrees with my choice. Amazing video. <laughs> yeah. A vengeful crusade between the Eredar and the Draenei. Okay. Sir Garrus had shown up at the World of Argus to offer them a place within the Legion, to which Archimon had killed Jaden. They willingly accepted, but Prophet Vela knew that this was not the way. I he hate that guy. He could, and he fled from the home world, something that killed kill Jaden took very personal. Fuck that he guy. he set out to track and exterminate the Draenei. Across the great dark beyond, their journey eventually led to them crashing and landing on Draenor, where for a while, the orcs and the Draenei, they kept a distance from each other, and they just let each other be. That all changed when Kill Jaden figured out where the Draenei had been hiding, and he figured right. that he could use the orcs to do his dirty work and kill the Draenei for him. Through Gul'dan, That's the cinematic. They worked on manipulating the That's orcs, the making yep. them believe that the Draenei were not that innocent. Actually, yep. their enemy aimed at destroying them. They needed to strike out first, unite the different clans, and rally together under one. So, just so you guys understand, so Kill Jaden basically created racism on Draenor, because he made the orcs hate the Draenei, and that's what happened. He, he created racism. One single leader rallied together as the Hordes. It was Blackhand that was appointed to be the war chief, and he took charge of the Hordes. Regrettingly or not, the clans gradually accepted Blackhand's rule and settled into the roles in the Hordes. To maintain order and discipline in his armies, there Blackhand is, made sure to surround himself with mighty lieutenants. The greatest of them were Etric, Orgrim Doomhammer, and of course, the big Marok dicks, Saufeng. dude. Yep. Each of them would have made a successful chieftain in their own right, but for now, they followed Black Hand's lead, what or cinematic well, is in this? truth, actually Gul'dan's lead, as the war against the Zenai unfolded. The orcs Wait a second. Embraced the what is this? What was this cinematic right there? That, that I just saw a Black Temple? Really? Holy shit, I don't even remember that. Powers the fell instead of the elements. They magically aged their children to increase the numbers of their troops, and eventually took in the blood of Manoroth, which made them incredibly powerful, but also bound to the Legion. 
With demon blood pumping through their veins, the orcs murdered every Draenei man, woman and child that they could find. Many lives were lost, but Velen and some of the people were able to hide away within the Zanga Marsh, away from the Horde's deadly grass. Despite Kil'jaeden's oh, Kil burning Jayden. wish to see Velen dead, he informed Sargeras about the orcs, and in them, the lord of the Burning Legion, he saw an opportunity. He had set his eyes on a little planet called Azeroth, and he wanted Ooh. to use the orcs to weaken the world's defenses and make it easier for the Legion to take the planet. Ooh. For now though, they just needed to let the Horde suffer for a little bit, as they were still high on the rush of victory, and Sargeras needed them to be desperate. Desperate enough to step through the dark portal, if that meant their survival. So it was that the promised power to Gul'dan was never delivered by Kil'jaeden. Oh, that's a badass picture. Magic that tainted the Legion, it had done incredible damage to the planet of Draenor. The orcs I had guess been able to conquer most in the of back. It, but the land had dried out. Food and water were very hard to find, and the orcs started to turn on each other. Years passed until finally Sargeras knew that the time was right. He made contact with Gul'dan, and he showed oh, him shit. his world of okay. Azeroth, a world with plenty of food, water, and enough enemies for the horde to <laughs> Take the bloodlust. So it Two was that they worked on creating the dark portal. But before they stepped through it, Sao Feng made a promise to his mates before she died that he would cross the dark portal alone. Whether he lived or died, their son would be safe and would remain untainted. The corruption of Fel, it did not only change that. the planet, it also changed the orcs, whose skin had slowly started to turn green. Even those who did not directly use the Fel themselves, they were still affected by it by simply being near it. Well. Now orcs, like Garrosh Hellscream and Draenor Saurfang, they maintained their original brown color since they were kept away from the mess, staying with the elders of Shadadar. Saurfang would not let the warlocks take him. His boy would be safe as he joined his warchief black hand through the dark portal and into the first orcish horde invasion of Azeroth. It's never medieval. Now, Gul'dan's oh. horde will sweep across this world like a locust swarm. And all my designs, all my carefully laid plans, will at last fall into place. Over time, Orgrim Doomhammer eventually found out what had been going on with the Legion, what had been going on with Gul'dan, and even his Warchief Blackhands. This pushed him into challenging his Warchief to Makura, a duel to the death to claim leadership of the Horde, a duel which Orgrim actually won. He was hell-bent on right, steering dude. the Horde back to the more honorable ways, away from all this corruption. Yet all this see, this is... See, I want you guys to understand what happens here, all right? This picture, I remember, I remember this picture exactly in the Warcraft 2 book, seeing this whenever I was a kid. So Orgrim Black Orgrim fights Blackhand and he beats Blackhand's ass. But then in the WAD uh cinematic, somehow Blackhand just knocks him away like it's just like nothing. Like I don't even know how this happened. Like Orgrim Doomhammer in WAD was such a disappointment. I was expecting him to be like a huge badass and he wasn't at all. It was awful. Same, they still needed to conquer the planet, since the old home that would surely mean death. With this change of leadership, Orgrim decided to make Saurfang his second in command. He had seen his efficient and Warcraft brutal tactics on the battlefield. Right there, By this point, he had led forces in the sacking of Shefrath, Stormwind, and everything in between, never losing a battle, so definitely a great orc to have at your side. I remember thinking that the cinematic was realistic. On. And with the survivors of Stormwind fleeing to the That's lands Lothar. of Lordaeron, the alliance of Lordaeron eventually rose up to fight back against this Kadgar. alien invading force. Yeah. But the Horde, they also rallied its numbers by adding Death Knights to the, the ranks and Death making Knights. a pact with the Amani Trolls. Now their leader Zul'jin, he'd been taken captive by the humans, and if Orgrim would help them with liberating him, they would aid the Horde in this war. This was a great boon, of course. The Amani Trolls, they knew the land far better than the Orcs did, so the pact was made, and Orgrim moved out to earn the Amani support. He ordered the bulk of the okay. Horde to turn east. Now his trusted lieutenant Varok Saurfang, he commanded a rear guard of Blackrock Orcs to waylay the Alliance. This gave okay. the rest of the Horde precious time to cross Hillsbred and funnel through a narrow mountain pass into a region known as the Hinterlands. Oh, I like how he did the so video. So Saurfang stayed behind while the rest of the Horde, they pushed on. And then there's a little bit of a gap in Saurfang's story. We know for Ooh. certain that the Horde was eventually defeated by the Alliance and it Fuck doesn't em. appear like Saurfang went running back through the Dark Portal or hung out within Blackrock Mountain Mountain, which means that he either survived in the wilds all on his own, like someone like Etric did, or he was captured and placed within the Alliance internment camp. It's called a plot hole. All the same. A few years later, an orc by the name of Thrall, he would rise up and break not only his own chains of enslavement, but also liberate the captive there orcs to reform the Horde. The events of Warcraft there he played is, out, dude. with the Horde allying against the Burning Legion, presumably with Saurfang also amongst their ranks. Gromash Hellscream, together with Thrall at his side, they took on the Pit Lord Manoroth, and while Gromash did not live to see it, they were able to set the people free from their demonic curse. Thrall, 
The blood haze has lifted. The demon's fire has burnt out in my veins. This is such a <laughs> such a good cinematic man. It's at the end of like the orc campaign. Have freed myself. No, old friend. You freed us all. The demon blood's pumping in our so veins. Good, man. It no longer held control over them, which was, of course, a great thing, but it also created a bit of a new problem, so since good, now many dude. of the orcs had to face the atrocities they committed. The winter, after the curse was lifted, hundreds okay. of veteran orcs were lost to despair. Their minds were finally free. I didn't even free know that. To relive all the unthinkable acts that they had performed under the Legion's influence. Varok helped dozens of veterans come to grips with what they've done, ultimately saving the lives of many Great Horde soldiers, but even he yeah, is I had still no idea haunted that by his actions. The sound of swine being killed when they're ready for slaughter, it reminds him of the death screams of the children. Despite the memories Whoa. of the past haunting him, Sourfang still stands on the battlefield whenever it's needed. He stood with Thrall in the Valley of Strength during Classic, and that's where he really earned his high status amongst the horror players, getting his reputation up as the Alliance they now would come in and in try to kill the to leader, get a picture only of him? to find out that Saurfang doesn't take prisoners and was often more difficult oh to deal God. with than any of the other leaders. Quitting him yeah. would activate Saurfang's rage, his eyes would glow red and ask you, is that the best you can do? Just before one-shotting you, because the damage was just insane. Alliance could also mind control yeah. him, giving him access to his executability with a full rage bar and the jokes, they just kept coming. I don't even Very remember similar that. To Hogger and Gammon, for example, Saurfang got his whole list of Chuck Norris jokes. Some of them were even picked up and acknowledged by Blizzard. He became a fan favorite, and despite a small bit He's of a story missing, he I mean, has done some pretty badass he things. He is the best orc. Of course, he didn't just stand there next to Thrall. He also accepted heroes to come in and deliver the head of Onyxia and the head right. of Varian, screaming at the top of his lungs, acknowledging their glorious deeds of slaying these dragons. Then, That's during the right. opening of Ankaraj, he stood there as the supreme commander of the might of Kalimdor, leading the forces yeah. of both the Alliance and the Horde in the war effort against Kafun, the Karaji, and the Silver. This is way back in the day. I am Saurfang, brother of Broxigar. You know me to be the supreme commander of the might of Kalimdor. An orc, a true orc warrior, a wishes true for one warrior. thing, to die in glory of battle against the hated enemy. Some of you have fought in battles. Peace has been with us for many years. Many years this we sat idle, but many years we battled. In those years, where strife, the land, and legion and scourge sacked our homes, killed our families, these insects dwelt beneath us. Beneath that's a our homes. That's AQ, right waiting, there. Waiting to crush the life from our little ones, to slay all in their path. This they do for their god, and for our gods, that's Cthulhu. We defend. We stand. We show that as one, united, we destroy. Their god will fall. To die today on this field of battle is to die an orcish death. That's a to die that's today badass, dude. It's to die for our little ones, our old ones, our loved ones. Would any of you deny yourself such a death, such an honor? And many did die in that war, but through our great it's sacrifices, Cthulhu. we were able to stop much worse from happening, and Saurfang returned home to Orgrimmar. In time, the Dark Portal would reopen with the Burning Crusade. He himself did not return to Outland, but some of the orcs that were left behind, like Garrosh, I wonder why I never went back Grum, to meet his and Dranosh, son. son of Saurfang, they did reunite with the Hordes. A oh, good okay. thing too, okay, no as mind. their strength would soon be needed in the war against the Lich King. The Scourge struck out at both the Alliance and the Hordes, but Saurfang was there Thank to help you. defend Orgrimmar. So foolish to try and take a Saurfang. Now the choice was made to lead a campaign into the cold heart of Northrend itself to deal with the Scourge and Arvis the Lich King. Garrosh Hellscream, there he's he joined is. by Saurfang, who offers him advice throughout the campaign, since the son of Grum, much like his father, he's quite the hothead. He believes that all they need to win is the warrior spirit of the Horde, crush all that stand in their way. But Saurfang, he has learned much over the years, and he can see that the blood of Grum runs strong in Garrosh. 
Gromash and Saurfang, they both drank from the blood of Manoroth, which led them down a very dark path. He will not let Garrosh take them down that road again, with the promise from Saurfang to kill him before that day comes. Ooh. Foreshadowing. Now, as the campaign went on, we eventually made ready yeah, to assault the Broth Gates, wow. with both our four dragon leading the it's charge. Like five years in Alliance, advance. And Drano Saurfang quickly joining with the Corcoran Vanguards, as he's been appointed to command them by his father. Rise up, sons of the Horde! Blood That's Saurfang's son, right there. Us. Yeah. That cinematic was so fucking badass, man. Whenever that happened, it was such a surprise. There they are, man. I was wondering if you'd show up. I couldn't let the Alliance have all the fun today. Arthas! The old models, the man. The old models. Of your people demands justice. Look at, the, look at those models, man. And answer for your crimes. This is so good, dude. You speak of justice, of cowardice. I will show you the justice of the grave and the true meaning of fear. Enough talk! Let it be finished! Yeah, Lich King's really powerful. Just one hit, dude. One hit got his ass beat. Rossmorn shatters Dranos's weapon and claims his soul. Saurfang Just... lost his son that day. But the rest of the forces, they would not fare much better, as Sylvanas is betrayed by Varimafras and Apothecary Putris. Her developed plague I is unleashed that. upon all the oh, forces present, and our was... attention is now focused that. on the battle for the Undercity to take care the of the threat for the within Undercity. the Hordes. Jaina and Varian they take care of Putris, while Fra and Sylvanas they deal with Varimafras, but Varian isn't too happy with the Hordes. They lost a whole Never lot of is. people by working together at the Rolf Gates. Both of Four Dragon, longtime friend of Varian, lost his life to this betrayal, and he is ready to... To make things right. To disband your treacherous kingdom of murderers and thieves. Putris was the first strike. Many more will come. But Jaina oh. disagrees, freezes all in place, and teleports them out. Everything that Vral tried to accomplish between the Alliance and the Horde has been shattered. All that we have fought for in this world is lost. Not good. The hopes and dreams carried by my father and mother by Doomhammer. Gone. If only you were here right now, old friend, you would know what to do. Who's he talking about? I know what he would do. Who's he talking about? He would oh, say Grom. to you, Thrall, lead your people. Let's go home, old friend. Who's the guy next to him? It's good to have you back, Varrock, old friend. Oh, that's Sarfang. I'm sorry about your boy. Gorkron, we're left behind to keep an eye on oh, the place. Oh, wow. But the campaign against the Lich King is far from over. Okay. And after selecting the greatest heroes that the Alliance and the Horde had to offer, it was time that's to me. assault Icecrown Citadel and deal with the Lich King once and for all. Yeah. Inside, we actually discovered that both our four dragon was still alive and was currently being tormented by the Lich King. The Paladin still lives? Is it possible, High Lord? Could he have survived? Tyrion's really Power tall. Of the light knows no He's bounds, like eight feet tall. Fang. His soul is under great strain, but he lives. For now. Then we must save him. If we rescue Bolvar Fordragon, we may quell the unrest between the Alliance and the Horde. Because then they see they work together. To save Bolvar and quell the unrest, the Alliance and Horde decide to have a little battle in the sky, with Muradin and Saurfang pushing their forces to blowing each other out of the sky. I don't believe that they've actually appointed an official winner in the lore for this battle, which means that we have two scenarios to play out. One is where the Horde comes out as the victor, and Saurfang discovers what the Lich King has done with his boy. Corcron, move out! Champions, watch your back! Well, yeah, I think this the is what happens. Have been Join me, father. Yeah. Join me, and we will crush this world in the name of the Scourge. 
for the glory of the Lich King. There he is, dude. My boy died at the Wrathgate. I am here only to collect his body. That's cold, man. Stubborn and old. What chance do you have? I am stronger and more powerful than you ever were. We named him Dranosh. It means Heart of Draenor in Orcish. I would not let the Warlocks take him. My boy would be safe, hidden away by the elders of Garadar. I made a promise to his mother before she died that I would cross the dark portal alone. Whether I lived or died, my son would be safe. Untainted. Today, I fulfill that promise. Pathetic old orc. Come then, heroes. Come and face the might of the scourge. By the might. This is of kind the of a big deal, I guess. Yeah. I am released. <coughs> and here comes the long cinematic here. Yeah, he, d he didn't even check the loot. Where's the loot? Oh, so that's the cinematic. You will that's, have a proper there it is. ceremony in Nagrand. It's right there. Next to the pyres of your mother and ancestors. There's a cinematic right there. Honor young heroes. No matter how dire the battle. Never forsake it. Well, the Alliance also brings down Dranush, and Sao Feng shows up to claim the body wow. of his son. Don't we know what force happened there. me hand, Orc. We can't let you pass. Behind you lies the body of I don't know my how many times son. I've heard this, dude. I don't know Nothing how many fucking will keep times. Me from him. I've done ICC so many goddamn times, I've heard this probably I, 50, 100 times. I can't do it. Get back on your ship and we'll spare your life. Ooh. Ooh. Stand down, Muradin. Let a grieving father pass. This is where Jaina starts crying, dude. Jesus Christ. I'm so sick of this bitch. No co kills Ilnok Atar. I'm so tired of man. I will not forget this kindness. I thank you, Highness. I... I was not at the Wrathgate. But the soldiers who survived told me much of what happened. Your son fought with honor. He died a hero's death. He deserves a hero's burial. Quite a change from the variant that we saw in the Undercity. Respect yeah, is shown really on both good. sides. And apparently, Saofeng now moves out to honor his son. That was such a big deal whenever it happened. He would too. return to Northrend, though, to stay behind in Warsong Hold after the victory over the Lich King and command a skeleton force left behind by Garrosh. Hellscream doesn't anticipate that they'll have need of them. Since the Warsong Offensive, it had crushed the Scourge and taken the fighting spirit out of the rest of the enemies, as they had come to do. It is his belief that his former advisor will sit and watch spiders spin cobwebs and fully enjoy the peace that he so obviously craves. Garen Bloodhoof had also made the journey to Northrend. He was part of this conversation. Oh, that's the guy that Garrosh killed. On Sourfang's behalf. After what the old orc had endured, losing his son and all, Garrus's words were particularly harsh. Saofeng, however, he'd clearly grown used to Garrus's attitude, and he merely grunted. We have both done our duties. We serve the Horde. If I serve by watching little spiders instead of fighting large ones, then I am content. After the ships are loaded and ready to go, Karen says farewell to Saurfang. Garrosh might have joked about peace and quiet of remaining up here with but a skeleton crew, but the reality would be something else. And there would likely be ghosts aplenty to hunt Saurfang, if only his memories. Karen knew that, and as he looked into Saurfang's eyes, he knew that the orc knew it too. Karen wanted to thank him again, to offer encouragement, praise for the task so successfully yeah, I know completed, poison. for being able to bear such burdens. But Saurfang was an orc, not a blood elf, and lavish compliments and effusion that would not be welcomed or wanted. For the Horde. 
Karen sets. For the horde. Sourfang replied, and it was enough. You stay behind in Orphans, yeah. where you lost so very much. While well, Karen and Garrosh, they travel back home, and the events of the Cataclysm played out. There's a war Garrosh chief right was there. appointed war chief by Thrall, while yep. the shaman himself went out to try and heal the worlds. Karen yep. and Garrosh, oh. they ended up in Makora, a duel to the death, where the old bull died betrayed, and his son Bane, right. he took up leadership of the Torren. It seems like his time spent with Saurfang, it does have a massive impact on Garrosh. A good example of this can be found in the Stone Teller Mountains, where Overlord Krumgar decides where the guy. that it's a good idea to drop a bomb on Taldarak Grove. Who would do this that? This is a place of peace and learning, but the Orb believes that Who they would use do the that? location to create a weapon of mass destruction that would be used against the Hordes. High Chieftain Cliff Walker tries to persuade him not to go through with it, but Krumgar believes that he is carrying out the will of the War Chief, carrying out Garrosh's commands. My command! Uh oh. Was my command to murder innocents, Kromgar? Where do you get that hammer? Oh, chief! <laughs> Sir! Oh, I'm... just kill him for that voice, man. Am I a murderer, oh, Kromgar? Yeah. Yeah. No! War chief! Wait, oh, okay. Then I ask you again what have you done? I sent you into Stone Talon Mountains with an army. Your orders were to secure this land for the Horde. Instead, you laid waste to the land, murdered innocents, children even. Who would do that? Absolutely I spent ridiculous. spent a very long time in Northrend, Kromgar. I learned much about the Horde in that Sarpa, time. Dude, right there. While there, a wise old war hero told me something that I would carry with me forever. Oh. Honor, Kromgar. No matter how dire the battle, never forsake this is it. So far, uh, Garrosh is the best. Overlord character, Kromgar, you have disgraced so the Horde. Good, you have so brought good. shame to us as a people. Is by my right the as war chief, oh my God. I hereby relieve you of duty. You. Ah! Dismissed! <laughs> Krumgar is dismissed and thrown of the like edge. Sadly though, no, this Garrosh it's wouldn't last for helpful. very long. But that's the story we're going to save for next week, since we still have quite a lot to talk about when it comes to Saurfang's story. So for now, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed this. I... See, that's the thing with Garrosh, right? Is like, he was such a fucking badass character. And then they're like, hey, you know what we're going to do? We're going to make him an asshole now. And then we're going to kill him. <laughs> yep. That was it. Some town was a mistake. Hello, everyone. About that. Last week, Look we began that, the story of Varrock Sorfang, where we talked about... They're adding, by the way, they're adding that axe into the game. Uh, that's the horde... Uh, uh, the, the, like, honestly, that axe, just the axe right there. Let me, let me show you guys real quick. Where is it? That axe right there. Rock. So that makes me want to play Horde. Just, just the axe. Because I'm like, damn, I really wish I had that axe. I'm probably going to play Horde enough on my other character just so I have that one axe. That's it. Like, nothing else, just the axe. Or Fang, where we talked about the formation of the Hordes, the invasion of Azeroth, his time dealing with the ghost of the past, and of course, the massive loss that he faced while in Northrend, How do you get shot son three the arrows? King. Garrosh Hellscream was appointed War Chief of the Hordes, and although it first seemed like he took Saurfang's lessons to heart, he changed rather quickly with Mr. Pandaria, where he first tossed Krumgar off a cliff for bombing innocents, children even, and forsaking his honor. With Mist, he seems to have forgotten about all of that, as he now too drops a mana bomb of Fetamore, and even uses his dark shamans to twist yeah, the he elements. He, he forgot, elements yes. Still healing from the events of the Cataclysm, Whoops. and slowly but surely, the Horde realized that something had to be done. As we went further through Pandaria, Vol'jin eventually figured out that Garrosh was planning to use the power of the Mogu to shape flesh and build warriors. Playing God and making monsters. This is not what the Horde is about, the troll believes. Not happy. But speaking out, has the other orcs slice his throat. Oh, this he would is spend some time oh. healing and recovering to eventually return and lead the Darkspear Rebellion. The Horde rising up against the Warchief. And while some orcs, like Nuskreen, believed that the will of the Warchief was absolute, 
Other orcs did not agree. Thrall himself even came back to deal with the mess that he'd left behind. After Vol'jin's return, he, he teams cause. up with Saurfang to infiltrate Orgrimmar, while the rest of the forces, they quickly follow. At the gates, they're stopped by Korkron troops, but Nazgrim is kind enough to send them away and he lets them in. He of course has a lot of respect for Thrall and Saurfang, but he's still unwilling to break his oath to the war chief. We're forced to take Nazgrim down as we siege Orgrimmar and in the rough human passage on the way the whole to the raid. Paragons of the Cluxy, we meet up with Saurfang, who's been kicking some serious buck butts. Oh, I forgot. Ah, more of Vol'jin's revolutionaries. <coughs> You've made it. Have you found Thrall? I didn't even know this. I am badly hurt. He insisted on going ahead alone. Tell me, how yeah, goes I remember the this. battle up above? What of Nazgrim? Speak to me. Uh oh. Ah, Nazgrim, a great leader and a fine warrior. He got got. He valued his oath to the war chief more than his life. I tried to tell him, to tell him that Hellscream betrayed us, cast aside a war chief's responsibility to his own people. But Nazgrim, too loyal, too proud. I don't remember this whole dialogue Damn, at all. Damn, Hellscream. His ambition tore our horde apart. Go on, find Thrall, finish this. I will live. Like he promised Garrosh and Norfriend, he helped out with bringing the war chief down. They tried to lead the horde down a very dark path. Oh, he's got to loot the mobs before His he leaves. Is not what they Makes believe sense. the horde is about. Vol'jin is appointed as the new war chief, but instead of executing Garrosh, they decided to place him on trial in Pandaria. For this trial, there had to be a defender and an accuser. Toronto Whisperwind was appointed as the accuser for the Alliance, but the Horde planned to have Bane Blood Bane. as his defender. Of course, Bane could have been fierce. Garrosh was the one who'd killed his father. How could he be his defender? But it even seems like a conflict of interest. That he was the right choice. Make them listen, came a voice that had so far been quiet. It was deep, strong despite age, and a sharp thread of yeah, pain. It's rigged, man. There's no challenge in flinging a list of atrocities at Garrosh's head, said Saurfang. The test will be who can make the judge and jury truly listen. To hear you speak for calm consideration when all know how you suffer. Only you, Bane Bloodhoof, you can do that. And so Ooh. it was that Bane accepted this very difficult job. And during the trial, they showed visions related to Garrosh. Visions from witnesses who knew him in life. Saurfang himself was questioned, and at first, Saranda planned to show the vision of his son's death at the Wrath Gates. But Bane protests, not wanting the old veteran to relive that pain. Even Taranzu agrees that Varok is a respected war hero and has undergone. I think it's weird. Did they have like a trial, like a court, like courts that we have now, like a court to decide if Garrosh was guilty or not? Like it just seems ridiculous to me. Like, they have, like, the defendant, the accuser, the judge, everything. It, it's a court in World of Warcraft. Like, I don't know, it just seems so fucking insane. Oh, and they omitted evidence. Yeah, yeah, they omitted evidence to make Garrosh seem worse. Some great loss. But just like real courts. But it is a bearing on the interactions with Garrosh. It's not like the Lich King's on trial here. Color rose into Rhonda's cheeks. She withdrew her request and offers apologies to the witness if it disturbed him. Instead, she went for the vision of Garrosh and Saurfang talking with each other in Northrend. The veteran warning the hothead that if he would take the horde down a dark path once again, he would personally take him out. Bane gets to question him and asked if Saurfang believes that Garrosh did indeed take them down the dark path. The orc does, of course, which is why he took up arms against him. But surprisingly, he does not want to see Garrosh executed. Garrosh was not always as you see him now. He was, as I have said, reckless and impulsive. But I once would never have doubted his loyalty to the Horde. That's right. And even now, I do not doubt his loyalty to his people. That's right. But his crimes must be addressed. I vow to kill him, and I would still uphold that vow, but I would not surrender him to others for execution. So he wants to I kill him. I would challenge him myself. Imda Makura. Do you oh. think he deserves a second chance? If he defeated me, yes. That is the way of the orcs. Oh, wow. The true way, honor. 
Bane could barely believe what he was that hearing. That would have been crazy. I do not wish to misunderstand you, so forgive my repetition. You do not want Garrosh executed by the courts, but rather wish to challenge him in honorable combat? And if he this won that Game combat, of you would see him forgiven? He would need to earn his reputation back, given that he has ripped it to shreds and trampled it into the angry earth. Sourfang snapped. But yet, if he were a victor, then he should have that chance. He had honor once. He could learn it again. Bane could barely refrain from letting out a shout of delight. This he understood. Sarfang would have beat his ass though. Let's and be honest. And moreover, it was fair. He thought of his father dying in the Makura and how Cairn would have approved and knew in his heart that he was on the proper track. Despite his anger towards Garrosh, yeah. Bane was in truth doing the right thing. He gave Tyrande a triumphant look and announced that he had no further questions. And to his surprise pleasure, neither did Tyrande. In the end, the trial itself didn't matter much for happened? Fedor Garrosh, considering that the bronze dragon Kairos Dormu, he held him escape, oh, and he right. took him plot back device. in time to an alternate reality. Massive plot device. Refion had come up with the idea to have Huge Garrosh lead a plot new device. horde, a horde that could support us Gigantic. against the coming leads of threats. But things didn't expansion. go exactly as planned. Garrosh murdered Kairos as soon as they arrived. He made contact with yeah. the alternate version of his father, yeah. and together they formed the Iron Horde. Yeah. One that did refuse the demon blood offered by Gul'dan. But also one still very keen on invading Azeroth, with the Dark Portal turning red. Making a new one. Alliance and Horde were called to battle once more and ventured through the Dark Portal. Garrosh would indeed find his end in Makura, not with Saurfang, but with Thrall. Well, Cheating! Well, role during the expansion, that was simply to show up in the Horde garrison and offer a variety of quests for the general. For yeah. a small time, they could even ask the legendary orc to join them on patrol, but that was apparently a bug <laughs> and quickly hotfixed, out of fear that High Overlord Saurfang would cleave the garrison in half. Interesting to note is that we do see alternate oh, versions of characters like Duratan, Gromash, and Orgrim, but there's no alternate version of Saurfang. That's a good Because they point. wanted to give us a chance of actually winning the war against the Iron Horde, which we did, of course. That's we true. dismantled the Iron Horde and we took away Gromash's power, which Gul'dan used to his advantage as he offered the Demon Blood once again. This time, some of the orcs did accept. They even managed to summon Archimonde into the world, and I in his that, final right. moments, Archimonde sends Gul'dan over to our reality to kick off another invasion from the Legion. At the Tomb of Sagaris, he opened up a massive rift for the Legion to come through, and once more, Alliance and Horde had to team up and deal with the demonic threats. Sylvanas Windrunner and Varian Rin, they led the charge, but things didn't exactly work out. Killed by a it trash a mob. Trip, waiting to be sprung. The Killed Horde was overwhelmed, Vol'jin so mortally chief. wounded, and they were forced to retreat. Not good. The Alliance down below, they saw the Horde abandon them and were forced to do the same, but Gul'dan wasn't about to let his prey run away on too. Harms. Varian sacrificed himself so that the rest of them could escape, while Vol'jin's wounds ultimately took oh. his life as well. Back in Orgrimmar, Saurfang, now war chief of the orcs and commander of the city's defenses, yep. he lets heroes in to witness the final moments of their war chief. That's right, dude. There we go. <laughs> Come forward. War Chief. The Noah spirit say death will claim me soon. In the end, death claims us all. But the Horde will live on. I have never trusted you. Good call. Who would I have ever imagined in our darkest time that you would be the one to save us? Yeah, he's like, what the fuck? The spirits have granted me clarity, a vision. They whisper a name. Many will not understand. You must out of the shadows and lead. You must be what While some would have loved to see an orc like Saurfang become the war chief, 
It's the name Sylvanas that the spirits whisper to Vol'jin. Under her leadership, Release. the Lord moves the out to claim vengeance for his dude. death, stop the Legion threats, and of course, Cao Fang is right there with them. He was present, defending against the Legion invasions of the Northern Barons, but Ytrig notices that Cao Fang is not the same ever since their loss at the Broker Shore. Though he led well and slew many, he has taken our defeat hard. Ytrig fears that he is determined to return to the Broker Shore, and he asks warriors to go and speak with him in Dalaran. Ah, our way to Ytrig sent you. His concern is noble, but unnecessary. Death is our likely end on those shores. You know this, yet I can see the determination in your eyes. Perhaps you have honor to regain there as well. Saurfang is indeed very angry, but he does not chase his own death. All he wants is to regain a bit of honor and slay the demon still drunk in the victory. We join him on his spare mount, but the Legion, they're not defenseless, of course, and they shoot us out of the sky. Make them pay, champion! Make them pay! Oh, he named no his worry, character Broxagar. It will take a little bit more to kill someone like Saurfang, as our journey takes us to the very halls of Valor, where we meet up with Odin and work on our order hall, including <coughs> mighty artifacts to use in his war against the Legion. Mighty artifacts. Smith Helgar is kind enough to help us with empowering the that artifacts, was me, not you, but the Valajar is in need of inspiration. He's looking for an axe, whose forms has seen a truly astounding amount of battle, wielded by one of the oh. most powerful warriors in the world. Yeah, this Both is the... Uh, and owner the hidden appearance. together in the crucible of war we need to find this hero and convince them to come yeah. to the halls of valor one name of course immediately comes to mind varok saurfang and his arcanite reaper there you he is dude. Are one of the greatest warriors that the horde has ever there fielded he is, dude. your arcanite reaper is feared by all your foes i do not do what i do for praise i am here to save azeroth and the hordes i sense you have a purpose here what do you want we tell him of Helgar's request, and Saurfang is honored that we think so highly of him. It's true, he has seen no small amount of battle, but so have we. It's time to see how far we've come, this and we get the, the opportunity to do with him ourselves. This In the Circle of Glory, the legendary Watch orc this. shows us just what an honorable, experienced, mighty orc can do. Wow, a auto attack. is only as good as his wielder, Blade as once upon a time target. Broxigar showed us with the extra scenarios. Oh, no. And while Saurfang's weapon was not forged with this the help so of Wild God, it is still very impressive. After winning the duel, or some might say after Saurfang allows us to win, Helgar inspects both wielder and weapon together. The scratches on the blade, the wear on the haft, tell of battle stresses and where it is hit most often. There See how easily you balance the heft. The comfort of your grip shows years of experience. While that can never be forged, he can improve a new weapon in the right places, so its wearer will strike more true and lives to earn those years. It shows that even a Valajar can learn from the younger races, as we earn the right to wield the Arcanite Bladebreaker. There it is, dude. So I guess that's basically just we like Sarfang's weapons. Artifacts. We stood oh. against the might of the Legion. We even went to the world of Argus and stopped Sargeras from destroying our worlds. He was able to leave us with a little parting gift. A massive blade now rests within Silophus, and the world of Azeroth is wounded. Not good. War Chief, if I may offer a few words. Shouldn't give a fuck. It is with both pain and pride that we gather here today. Pain for many brave heroes of the Horde fell against a terrible foe. And pride for against all odds. We have vanquished the Legion. We bled. Now we heal. Look at Gallar. Look how fat he is, We dude. mourned. Now we celebrate for the Horde. She doesn't even care, dude. In that day, Leto. War Chief! A moment of your time. I like this guy, though. I do. Hmm. No doubt Gallywix wants to push his latest money grubbing scheme. Rats scurry about their business. And get eaten if they're not careful. <laughs> Oh, that could happen. So that means they're gonna eat him. He's gonna get eaten. That's good. I like that. That's great. Mm, what is the rat up to? 
He does keep sending more goblins to Silithus. <laughs> Nothing good has ever come out of Silithus. It's PTSD. Because remember, he was in the AQ war. It was the Azerite. Yes. We'll change everything. <laughs> I told you! And the Alliance knows nothing of this. Don't worry, War Chief. I got people on it. What a liar. There it is. And that's pretty much where we're at when it comes to Saofeng's story. He remembers the days of leading the forces in Silifus during Classic, and he does not believe that going back there is a good idea. The Horde yeah. still goes out to mine ass, right? The crystallized blood of the Titan spirit inside the world. And despite Gallywix telling his war chief not to worry about it, the Alliance, of course, discovers what the Horde is doing, and they move into Silifus as well. They too follow the trail of ass right. Only time will tell what the story is going to bring next, but I do want to talk a little bit about the hints that we have, a little bit about the information that we know, and speculate on what might come. So if you don't want any spoilers, then this will be the time to turn off the video. For those interested, at the last BlizzCon, they handed out a oh, these short are the preview books. of the upcoming okay. novel written by Christy Golden, which is called Before the Storm. Sylvanas Windrunner, former Ranger General Silvermoon, the Dark Lady of the Forsaken, and present War Chief of the Mighty Horde, and resented being told to come to Orgrimmar like a dog Such that a needed bitch, to perform man. all of its tricks. She is ridiculous. She to the Undercity. She missed its shadows, its dampness, its restful quietude. Rest in peace. Just ran in there and died. You get the screenshot. And had a smile. It faded almost at once as she continued pacing impatiently in the small chamber behind the war chief throne in Gromash Holds. A few years ago, Garrus Hellscream had pushed to have a massive celebration in Orgrimmar to commemorate the end of the Northrend campaign. He wasn't war chief. Not then. There had been a parade of every veteran who wished to participate, their paths strewn with important pine boughs, and a gigantic the feast awaited them at the so end bad. of the route. Jesus Awards had been distributed, and the inns of the city flung open without limits to those who had fought for the hordes. It had been extravagant there and is, expensive, dude. and Sylvanas initially had no intention of following in the footsteps of Hellscream in not just this situation, but in any. Huh. He had been arrogant, well, you know, brutal, everything changes. impulsive. Sylvanas had loathed him and had secretly conspired, unsuccessfully, regrettably, to kill him, even after he'd been arrested and charged with his war crimes. His decision to attack Fedamore with a devastating mana bomb had to stop her races wrestling with their consciences. The only thing that had troubled Sylvanas about it had been the orc's timing. When at last, inevitably, Garrosh had been killed, Sylvanas was pleased, though she still harbored regrets that she had not been the one to take his life. Varok Saurfang, the leader of the orcs, and Bane Bloodhoof, chieftain of the Tauren, had borne no love for Garrosh either. But they pushed Sylvanas to make an appearance, and at least some kind of gesture, to mark the end of this war. Brave members of this horde, you lead, fought and died to make sure the Legion did not destroy this world, as it had so many others. The young bullet intones. He had been but one step away from openly rebuking her. Sylvanas recalled oh. Saurfang's thinly veiled warning. Threats. You are the leader of all the hordes. Orcs, Tauren, Trolls, Blood Elves, Goblins, as well as the Forsaken. You must never forget that, or else they might. What I will not forget, Orc, she thought, I arising in her new, are those words. So from uh -oh. this we learn that Sylvanas has no problem with the tactics used by Garrosh, more so with the timing of it all, and Saurfang reminds her that she now leads more than just the Forsaken. She is the war chief and should be there for all of them, while at the same time her Forsaken, resurrected with free will, they feel like she left them without leaving someone behind to care for them. In response, a new organization has formed called the Desolate Council, one that what? does not agree with the Banshee Queen's plans of trying to stay alive forever. They don't know what it exactly is that they do want then, all they know is that a new faction has risen up, the disadvantage of giving them free will. Two sides, both wanting more from her, while she herself still sees the Forsaken as her people, not the entirety of the Hordes. I didn't all even know same, that. She must keep up appearance, and wow. she's going to need the brave fighters of the Horde wow. for yet another battle. 
This wow. one is one that she and Nathanos have both longed for. The attack on Stormwind. That is where the preview ends. And it's my hope that the story is going to revolve around Sylvanas starting out at the point where she didn't even want to be Warchief, right? That is where they're going to begin with. But she'll make use of the situation and use the Horde as she pleases. She right now doesn't see all the races as her people. But perhaps in the events of the storyline, it will teach her more about what it means to be for the Horde. And not nah, just go with not. the old motivation of staying alive. Nah. That's just the hope though. Like I said, the story hasn't been revealed yet. Now another bit of information that we learned from BlizzCon and a couple of interviews is that Teldrassil is going to be burned down by the Horde, which then leads into the Siege of Lordaeron. That sexy Battle for Azor cinematic that we have, that Not follows good. the burning of the Night Elves' home. We also have two pictures of that event. First, there's a blue one. Teldrassil is still standing, and we see, presumably, Sylvanas, Nathanos, and Saurfang, with an unknown elf on the ground. Weapons, a bit of flame in the forefront, presumably a battle that took place here, and the elf is not looking too good, considering what's pierced in their back. Yeah. The next picture. Then here's Sylvanas standing by herself, the elf now leaning and gazing upon the destruction. The fire in the front is gone, the tree is now ablaze, while Saurfang and Nathanos, they no longer stand at the warchief side, they possibly set sail with one of the ships. It's anyone's guess really what exactly went down here. We don't know Look at who that, the elf dude. is, Look at that. why See? they're burning down the sail, did that? how they managed to do so, what kind of battle took place here. All of that is pretty much unknown. It is interesting that an orc like Saurfang is present in this critical moment, since we know that he is very loyal to the war chief. He's a proud, honorable orc, I like how he the board, him, man. but That's definitely perfect. up to a certain point. When he believes that someone once again tries to take the horde down that dark path of the past, he won't follow forever like someone like Nuskrim did. He is capable and willing to pick up arms if it's in the best interest for the horde, <laughs> and yet, here we see him standing. Did he try to stop this moment from ever happening? Is there some sort of scheme being set up to make it look like the Horde did it? Is someone trying to manipulate no. events to have the Alliance and Horde in all-out conflict nope. so that they can profit from it? Wrong. So many questions. Now fast forward to the moment of the Siege of Lordaeron, where once again we see Saurfang standing with the Horde and is brought to his knees. But Sylvanas is able to rally the troops and in their massive charge out of the city, Enduin and Saurfang I'm surprised Greyman just beat his ass like that. They told Muradin to step down is knocked off his feet. Greymane then pushes Saurfang away, and Enduin calls on the light to heal the troops, and they continue their battle. Lordaeron will fall to the Alliance, and that's pretty much all that we know right now. Again, we see Saurfang standing with his warchief. This legendary honorable orc, respected on both sides, is fighting at her side. I really, really hope that there's going to be a lot of character developments and a very solid reasoning. Azerite is what reignites the Alliance and Horde conflict. That is to say, there was a bit of conflict within Stormheim and of course a bit of conflict before all of that. But considering that the conflict was just so underdeveloped during Legion, this seems to be a, a cataclysmic moment, right? Azerite, uh -oh. everybody's going for it. This seems to be the moment. So At this point Azerite in time, we have oil. a war chief that doesn't really care about the other races of the Horde. She sees the Forsaken as her bulwark against the infinite, and she didn't even cheer with the other leaders. What could motivate someone like Saurfang to not join a rebellion like he did during Mr. Panaria? Which is why I hope that there's going to be a lot of intrigue and betrayal. Perhaps it's Gallywix that sees his moment to make a profit. Perhaps it's Greymane that uses the opportunity to get his vengeance which then backfires. But wait, there's even more. All of this, this script was written before Alpha was released. And with it, we learn a couple of juicy tidbits here and there about what Saurfang is doing. Keep in mind that this is well, either data mine information or Alpha information. So all of this is not set in stone. But it appears that Saurfang, Nathanos okay. and Sylvanas, they are indeed on their way through Felwood into Darkshore, preparing to squeeze Malfurion from both sides. I couldn't really find more details on the burning of Teldrassil sure itself. Nothing Besides, bad happens. Sylvanas wanted to secure the continent. But at the Seeds of Lordaeron, we have Alliance and Horde going at it. Sylvanas has an Azerite machine, a war machine, which appears to be against Saurfang's way of battle. As they say, honor means nothing to a corpse, Saurfang. You have the luxury of underestimating death, but it is something with which I am intimately familiar. Maybe you don't care if your people die, so long as it's honorable. But to me, I this, this horde is good. worth saving. Yeah. Anyone who disagrees does not deserve to stand among us. So die your warrior's death, high overlord Saurfang. It means little to me. Perhaps I will raise your broken body to serve me once more. Or perhaps you will have a chance to say hello to your son. What a Again, bitch. Again, we're working only with tidbits here, but it appears that Sylvanas will do anything, anything it takes to hold the line against the Alliance, change the way of warfare, and secure the continent for the Horde. Now the question is, does Massive she do that for bitch. the Horde or for her own well-being? 
Time will only tell, I suppose. Sour Fang is defeated, demanding an honorable death. Enduin remembers how his father told him that Varok Sour Fang represented what was best of the Hordes, its sense of honor. He admired the orc for it, and so does Enduin. There's no honor in slaying him in that moment, despite Sour Fang thinking that that's not for an alliance king to decide. What is but he's captured all the same and taken to the stockade. What if Sour Fang goes king to the alliance? wants his people to treat Sour Fang with the respect that he is due, and when he returns, they'll speak of honor and actions. When you return, be big. we will see. The veteran warrior replies, as I assume that the alliance goes further with the battle. They try to go after Sylvanas and the rest of the hordes, and while they do win the Siege of Lordaeron, they fail in taking a warchief, as we can see her on the Alpha testing. Sylvanas is located in Gromash Hold, where she sends out heroes to find a vessel containing important information that was en route for Bladefist Bay. The ship has never arrived, and her scouts report that it was seized by the Alliance I hated and then this taken to scenario Wind. Together so with Nepanos, Rokan, Felistra, and Lassan Skyhorn, we fly into Stormwinds to infiltrate the stockades and extract the prisoners. These prisoners are Prophet Zul and Princess Talanji of the Zandalari tribe. Prophet Zul. We also discover that Sour oh Fang is still alive and imprisoned. Now, an in game cinematic is supposed to play out here, one that's not available quite yet, but Sour Fang is not coming back with us. He'll buy us as much time as he can to complete our mission, as he tells our guards to take him to the Boy King, as he would have words with him. During our escape from the city, Felistra believes that the Alliance troops were waiting for us Came and that we've been compromised point. but that's the last to be here of sour fang for a moment now it's very difficult to try and piece together what exactly is happening here since we're missing a whole lot of pieces of the puzzle for the moment to me it seems like sour fang does not agree with his warchief's way of warfare which landed him in prison to speak of honor and actions i imagine that that is what the conversation is going to be about and from Enduin's history we know that he was often the, the voice of reason when it came to peace negotiations between the yeah, alliance Jana had and even Hordes. bigger titties Will in the comics. Sour Fang oh my be God. a bridge between the factions? Nice. Maybe. I just can't imagine someone like Sour Fang actually joining Team Alliance unless there's something really, really bad going on within the Hordes. Now, my hope is that at some point, these voices of reason, they're going to have to rise up again, considering that the faction war is not the only threat in this expansion. And another little bit of extra information. A lot of people have recently been asking, what about alternate orcs joining the Alliance? Now, from my point of view, that would be absolutely hilarious if Blizzard actually does that. It would I be. would be laugh my ass be off. stupid as fuck. I personally highly doubt it. The reason for that is that Battle for Azeroth is going to take us back to the Horde Alliance conflict, right? Oh. Considering that the heart of the conflict is humans versus orcs. Orcs. I would be very, very surprised if the orcs actually joined the alliance. But like I said, it's it's not impossible, and I would find it hilarious. It would be dumb, dude. I'm sure. As more things are going to be data mined and more stuff that revealed during the alpha beta, during the Before the Storm novel, we'll get a clearer picture on what's going on and where they want to take him. For now, though, this is where we're at with his story. An orc who has seen many battles had to deal with the shadows of the past. What a as shitty well as trans Many mark. things so very dear to him, yet always tries so to worse. maintain honor and stand for what it means to be what part of the horde. Honor, that? young that's heroes, that? no matter how what dire the battle, never forsake it. As always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time, guys. See ya! I thought that was pretty good. I mean, I really did. I, I liked it a lot. It was a lot of, there was a lot of sense made out of it, and I didn't know. Um, like, to me personally, I kind of, uh, I, I didn't know a lot of that stuff, man. I really didn't. Like, 95% of it, I probably didn't know. Uh, was Actually, it was about like 50 I didn't know. Especially, like, the early stuff, I, I didn't remember at all.